All right, so I have set up my black and white high resolution image. Let's see exactly what resolution this photo is. If I go to image size, it's big. So it's um, nine by seven inches at 600 pixels per inch. Before I get to doing much, let me uncheck resample and let me put it within basically 11 by 14 inches at 395 and that's going to work really well okay it's also got a little bit at the bottom here if I wanted to trim it I might do this canvas size make it exactly 11 inches tall and crop it from the top and then I'll get that image but maybe that's not exactly what I want maybe I want to find my own cropping I want the bottom of the guitar there. So maybe like that. And then I'll do canvas size. From the bottom, crop it to 11 inches. There we go. So now I have an image size that's exactly 11 by 14 by 395 pixels per inch. So, bigger than I need it to be. Okay, now the problem is old photos don't always have great textural definition, right? Especially scans of old prints. So what do I do to set it up so that I can color it and take advantage of the photo? I'm not going to do anything in terms of adjusting leveling level, levels, levels, or levels, or anything like that. What I did is I made a duplicate of this background image, which was a, has color in it. I desaturated that duplicate by going to Image, Adjustments. Here, I'll just show you. Duplicate it. Go to Image, Adjustments, Desaturate, which is the same as doing hue saturation and taking it all the way down to zero for saturation. That takes out all that color. Then I convert that layer to multiply mode, which makes it like a transparent negative, and I move it on the top. And then I make a layer that is just pure white, and I call it paper white, and I lock it so I can't accidentally paint on it. And I lock that copy that I made that I changed to multiply mode, and I label it blacks and grays and I lock it so I can't accidentally paint on it. And then I put a layer in between the two using this new layer post-it that is unlocked and that's where I'm allowed to color. Make it visible. You might even right click it and, and give it a color so you, you know always that you want to be on that layer. And that allows me to use the brush tool and to paint and it will go behind the negative or the positive it will go behind the blacks and grays so this color doesn't make a whole lot of sense but you see how the blacks and grays will fall on top of it but here's the problem this background is a lot lighter than this color So there's another way we can colorize that only allows the color to show where it matches the value of the background. And that option is called not multiply, but the color layer. And so for this background, I might end up doing that. But first, I want to work in between with my color being at a normal setting just so we understand how coloring works. And this is like dropping inks behind the silver nitrate layer. And I just want to do a better job choosing colors, right? So I'm going to select it all, clear it. How do I choose colors? It's very hard to just double click on the color here and pick the right color. So if I want his guitar to be a light wood color to use the spectrum here and try to find that color in order to paint it.
that's pretty hard to do. What's much easier to do is to recognize the colors you want and to steal them from other photos. So I go to my color reference folder and I find a good photo to start with and I open it up with Photoshop. Okay? And now I want to arrange them so they're side by side. So I'm going to go to Window, Arrange, and I can do two up horizontally or two up vertically. I'm going to do it vertically. So I have them side by side. I'm going to swap them. Let me do that again. Two up vertically. Because I like to work with my reference on the right hand side. I can adjust it. So I'm seeing the guitar in the photo here nice and clearly. And I'm on my brush. My brush is 100% opaque, that's important. And I'm using this brush setting, which is 100% hardness, and it is sensitive to size. So the harder I press, the more of that circle gets filled. So this allows me to just color in simply. The reason I'm using 100% opacity is it's like a coloring book and I want to color within the lines for this flat local color with one color for each object. And if I did it at a lower opacity or if I set used a brush that changed with pressure how much opacity, then you'd see the colors wouldn't look solid and even. All that makes sense? All right. So we'll get there. So I'm on my flat color layer using 100% opacity, using a size sensitive brush. And now instead of choosing the color on my own, I am going to hold down the option button on my keyboard and that converts my brush tool to the dropper tool, which will steal colors for me as long as it's from a Photoshop file. So I only need to use my brush and now I hold down option and I can steal yellows from here. So I want kind of a base local color, a really light, light color there. And now I paint with it. And I can actually paint pretty freely. You don't need to worry too much about going within the lines because eventually all of it's going to get painted. Even your whites, you're going to paint back in, right? So here I'm going to color behind the strings and everything, just anywhere that that wood might be, around the pick guard, onto the background, overlapping with his hand and everything. And I'm coloring it. That's my base color. If I turn off the blacks and grays, you'll see that color really clearly here. But when you add in the multiply, you see how the, the grays of that exposure are mixing with it. So you still get the, the different striations in the wood. And so that can be nice. Now even though this guitar here has other tones, has like oranger tones and things. For this layer, I keep it really flat and simple. So it just looks like this, one solid color. And it's called local color because that's the color that the thing is no matter what the lighting. So if I was coloring a banana, this would be yellow. Right? The side of the guitar has a different local color. So I'm going to hold down option, try to find a very light version of that you know, a version of it without a lot of um, grays entering into it. It's very red. And then when I paint that in, you'll see that how all those grays will make it a lot darker. Almost looking black, but that's the color. And that was the lightest one I could get from stealing. Sometimes I'll steal a color and then I'll push it a little bit brighter because I know that so many blacks and grays are going to affect it anyway. 
And ultimately, you don't want to pick a color that's darker in value than the gray that you're coloring. Okay, the suit, this gray suit's very dark. So if I steal the color, even from a light part of that gray suit, and I paint it here, it's going to get rid of all that definition in the suit. Though it still looks pretty cool, I know that that's a lighter tone. So instead, I might go to the grays, and I might say, okay, I want this to be kind of a pale blue suit. I'm going to push that up to there. And that might give me more of a flat color with options. Remember, this color, this, it's your choice what colors you use. And I think that will help set off the guitar, the oranges in the guitar, a little bit better. Okay, so step one for this project is what I call kill whitey. Okay? So this paper white, this is whitey. By the end of today, even though it's going to be sloppy, we want to treat it like a coloring book page. We want to get rid of all of the whites and replace them instead with our own flat, solid colors. Make sense? Start with the big, simple shapes first. Don't start with the, the eye color, you know? Big and simple, and we'll, we'll uh, eventually get to more more precise. And that's why I'm not worried too much about my edges yet. Because all of this is going to get worked with. And because I'm doing this flat color layer, I don't pick a different blue for this side. I use the exact same one. Now I can also rely on other reference. And if you want to work on more than one reference at a time, let's see what are these ones? Oh, it's damaged. Bummer. So for instance, I can open this one up in Photoshop as well. And then I could arrange them arrange to have what's called three up stacked. So I have two over here that I can steal from. And if I wanted to take kind of the color of his pants as a starting point, this allows me to do that. Hold down option, find a color in there, find a color in his shirt. It'll get more complexity that way. Lighten that up. Oh, you know what? I'll use the pink of her dress since this is a warmer picture. Let me do that for his handkerchief. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Paint that in. Now, what is the goal of this project? It's not to make something look photorealistic. It's to make the, the photo more interesting with your color than it was without your color. Now here's the nice thing, because you're coloring just flat local color, you can also steal it from yourself. So if I forget what color I use for the suit, I just turn off my black and grays layer and steal it directly from my own um, paint layer. But I don't steal it with the black and grays turned on because then the color will be a lot darker. Actually, no, it won't because I have it locked and I'm on the flat color layer. So that actually works. But when you are stealing colors from sources, you're, you're stealing everything that's there, the blacks and the grays and everything, right? So sometimes you have to lighten them to go underneath the blacks and grays of your photo. I don't think I want his pants to be the exact same color. 